Welcome, Marcia. Soldier standing on the battle line, finding comfort in the water and the wine. Good night, everybody. Still so shiny and so new, but you don't want to Glory to God. Good night, precious gem. All is well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Deborah Ross, how are you doing, girl? Soldier, keep your eyes straight ahead. Help the wounded. And though it hurts, you leave the dead. Keep your weapons and your spirit at the ready all the time. Be of courage and conviction. Hit the mark. Hit the mark. Throw the line. With me. How are you doing, bro? When the lights go out, Christ glows. You lie down to earth. Ninja, how many? Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And I'm proud of you. I know you've done your best. Good evening, Rosalind, Sheila Barrington. Good evening, Sister Sheila. Well, you are a mighty warrior, but don't forget, don't forget, you're still my child, Clarice McGarrow. God bless. Just in time, Lydia. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Soldier, standing on the battle line, finding comfort just in the nick of time. The wine, the wine with you. The fire shining in. God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The incomparable Christ. There is no one that is on the same stage as God said in the Old Testament, I am the Lord beside me. There is no other. There is none sitting beside me. I'm out here alone by myself because there is no one 
that can be compared like unto me. I'm incomparable. Or as I would say, incomparable. There's no comparison. Nobody. Uh, there's an African song. It says, nobody be like him. Nobody be like him. And when they start to get down into that song, they bend their back and go down, kick out their front foot, back foot. You know what I'm talking about. And they make it do what it do. They make the backbone slide. I just love to see them in worship. <laughs> but the way they move the hips, it look like uh, what we would call carnival or mashramani. They look like they're doing the thing that Jesus turned from ordinary water at the wedding. That's what they look like they're doing. So here we go. The word colossal. Colossal means great, grandiose, big, massive. The word colossal and gigantic, same word, big, like a giant, gigantic, are way too small in their descriptiveness to convey an adequate estimate of the fullness of the stature of Christ. They are too small. Like I said last night, the, thunder, the thunder's roar is but a whisper. It's too small. Christ is the only one who wielded the power of providence and swayed the scepter of omnipotence and exercised the full faculties, faculties of omniscience. He determined the bounds of national habitation. He says where the country starts and where it ends. And once he has set that up in motion, not one blade of grass, Chavez or Maduro. The skill of experts cannot account for his perfect spiritual manhood. The wisdom of philosophers cannot expound the preciousness of his sacrificial shepherdhood. The foremost sages of science stall, stall. They, 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 they can't move. When they attempt to elucidate the rays of supernatural light emanating from his glorious priesthood, we just examine manhood, shepherdhood, and priesthood. He stands alone as author and administrator, author, the genesis, the beginning of a thing, and administrator, the one who runs it, makes sure that everything works together for good to them. Hey, I feel that rocker shocker hit me there just now. It's going to be a good night. It's going to be a good night My helper is here already I like when the anointing hit early So you can just sit on the saddle You know it's going to be a great ride Get ready to be touched by the finger of God Tonight, tonight In the name of Yeshua the Messiah Yes He stands alone as author and administrator The author of salvation According to Hebrews 5.9 He holds the exclusive requisites For essential authorship the Ancient of Days, Daniel 7 and 9. He is ageless, timeless, and changeless. Ancient of Days. Ancient means old. Days means fresh and young. He is old, ancient, but he's young. He doesn't look his age because he doesn't have, you know, these lines that we have after a while. These lines that I have here when I knit my brow. He has none of that. He's as fresh as Jew, old as he is. Oh, glory to God. He's the Almighty which is, Revelation 1 and 8. He is faultless and flawless in his exercise of might. He is called the arm of the Lord. Ah, rock of shocker. According to Isaiah 53 and 1, he is adequately able to administer authority. There are some people, when poverty is in their life, they are nice, the nicest people you can know. But the minute they get some level of authority, they get big-headed and pig-headed. They get stupid and arrogant. They get pompous and egotistical. You can't stand them. Because they become an overbearing bully, walking around, strutting with arrogance all over the place. The Lord resisted the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and don't think too much about yourself. Yes, yes. In, uh, in Malachi 3 and 1, he's called the angel of the covenant. He confirms the promises and fulfills the purposes of God. Good evening, Monica. In Joshua 3 and 3, he's called the Ark of the Lord. He's a gracious guide and a glorious guardian. In 1 John 2 and 1, he's called the Advocate with the Father. Advocate, lawyer, representative. He assures access and acceptance. Not just access, you get to come, but acceptance. You get accepted when you get there. 
Sometimes you get access, you know, to get in. But when you get in, nobody want to be bothered with your sorry behind. Nobody likes you. They don't want you there. So you're not accepted when you get there. Wink, wink. I know about that. Been to a lot of places where I had access. But when I got in there, the place got quiet. Like, he again? <laughs> I can't stand him with the crazy laugh. And what is that thing he's talking about, Rocka Shocker? Wisdom. He's stupid, you know. <laughs> oh, glory to God. In Hebrews 6 and 19, he's called the anchor of hope. He is strength for our effort and stay of our expectancy. In Hebrews 3 and 1, he's called the apostle and high priest, fully obedient in observing his obligations to God. In Revelation 3 and 4, he's called the amen, faithful and final in fulfilling the word of God. Oh, bless his name. In Colossians 3 and 11, he's the all in all. He, is, he more than superabounds in all sufficiency. He more than, he doesn't just abound, he superabounds. Now, abounds already means that you're way ahead of the competition. You're abounding, which means you got more. But he not just abounds, he superabounds. Whatever he does, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Hey, 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 hey. Glory adios, man. He, the incomparable one, was not a, a, a fragment of the divine, but the fullness of deity. In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is not a temporary shadow, but he is the true substance. He is not a provisional makeshift, but a perfect manifestation. He is not a social organizer, but the savior of mankind. He is not a world reformer, but a wonderful redeemer. He is not a Jewish shepherd, but Jehovah Shalom. He is not a figment of reason, but the fountain of revelation. Aha, uh -huh, the incomparable one. Immensity and eternity cannot encompass him. He is the product of neither. He has no pedigree or ancestry since he is the infinite one. Glory to God. And like Melchizedek of old, has no beginning and no ending. In 1 Kings 8 and 27, the book says, The heaven of heavens cannot contain him. He is called Alpha and Omega. He encompasses the whole alphabet. Yes, yes. He is the key to literature and language in view of the fact that he is the word. In Christ, all the divine attributes are perfectly balanced. His matchless kindness and his stainless pureness, his peerless loveliness and his blameless justice, his flawless righteousness and his faultless meekness, his staunchless goodness and his priceless preciousness, his boundless blessedness and his taintless truthfulness, his spotless holiness, yaya rere. Good night, Shaniza. No mind is big and brilliant enough to comprehend the magnitude of the measureless range of dignity and the glory embodied in such a stupendous claim as Alpha and Omega. He has over 300 titles, offices, vacations, and names that appear on the surface alone. Yes, yes, Hebrews 5, 9, Hebrews 12 and 2. Christ, uh -huh, he precedes all others in origination. Since he is the origin of all things, ain't no one originated before him because from eternity to eternity, thou art God. He was there before the beginning. He's the one that began the beginning. He's the start of all things as Alpha and as Omega. I dare remind those of you who are students of theology that he is the eternal and everlasting God. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So he did not have a start. You can't start God. He's infinite and eternal. But he started all things. Time is but a piece of eternity cut out and given to man to get back to eternity. Glory to God. Christ precedes all others in origination. 
He stands supreme and preeminent without peer or competitor. No other author could grasp the important subject of salvation. Isaiah 43 and 11 says, Beside me, there is no other. Many authors of literature and lexicon, many authors of history and homilies, many authors of dictionaries and declarations, many authors of encyclopedias and encyclicals, but only one author of salvation. In this greatest of all authorship, Christ stands alone, absolutely and eternally alone, the incomparable one. No wonder Isaiah 14, 28, the book refers to him as the I am of indefatigability. Indefatigability simply means he don't get tired, he don't get weary, he doesn't get stressed out. His very nature knows nothing of fatigue and faintness. The everlasting God fainted not, neither is weary. Uh -huh. He is great in might and strong in power. Uh, he measured the waters accurately with two parts of hydrogen and one part of oxygen, H2O. He it is who meted out the heavens consistently and orderly so that eclipses, <clears throat> equinoxes, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, day and night shall never cease. He weighs the dust and counts the stars. He weighs the mountains and measures the very grain of ears upon our head. He knows the count. He numbers them. Ay, 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 ay. The Lord is unsearchable and his mind is inscrutable. He cannot faint nor can he fail or be discouraged in his magnificent, magnificent purpose. According to Isaiah 42 and 4, the everlasting God fainted not, he changed it not. He is unwearied in his disposition, and he is determined in his decision. His resolve is steadfast. He said, I will bring you out. That is sovereign rescue. I, referring to Jah, I will bring you out. Sovereign rescue means he's not giving it to the angels to do it. He is doing it himself, Lord Lane. As the sovereign God, Naomi Schumann, yes. He said, I will not only will I bring you out, sovereign rescue, but I will rid you of bondage. I will redeem you, stately relationship. I will buy you back. I will take you to me for a people. I will be your God. I will bring you into the land. They are brought out from this tired little place. Now they are in a spacious place, spacious release. I will bring you into a land. That's why I keep iterating and reiterating that you cannot serve a big God and remain small. Yes, yes. I will give it to you for a heritage that is settled recompense. He has ability. He exudes authority. He reflects authenticity. And he rebukes animosity. He is the pioneer of promises. He is the proprietor of providence. He is the promoter of covenants. He is continually observant of all that transpires because he is omniscient. The eyes of the Lord, said scripture, run it to and fro the earth, beholding the good and the evil. He is continually observant of all that transpires because of his omniscience. He is prominent everywhere to assure an aid because he is omnipresent. Oh yes, he's our help. The Lord, our help in whom we stand a shelter in the time of storm. In the book of Acts, the fourth chapter and the 12th verse, it says, neither is there salvation in any other. No, couldn't be any other because he is incomparable. For there is no other name given among men whereby you must be saved. What a lovely name, the name of Jesus, reaching high and far than the brightest star. Oh yes, it's sweeter than the song they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim Christ, the lovely name. Uh, for him to qualify as author of salvation, you have to be omniscient. For anyone to qualify as author of salvation, they have to be omnipotent. For anyone to qualify as author of salvation, 
They have to be omnipresent. And only Christ has these threefold uh, power. Omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence. Christ exercises these infinite powers and is therefore eminently fitted and suitably qualified as the incomparable one. He is the author of the eternal ages. He possesses sovereign strength to empower the faint. The Bible says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. You all say hi to Constantine Libord, my brother, in the British Virgin Islands. How are you doing, Constantine? Your brother is hot on this thing, chasing a sermon here tonight. I'm going to preach up in here, up in here. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, as I was saying before, I was uh, uh, rudely interrupted. Uh, he is the author of the eternal ages. He possesses sovereign strength to empower the faint. His holiness and honor stands highest in heaven. This salvation does not depend on human behavior. This salvation is neither temporary. In Isaiah 45 and the 17th verse, Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. And those who say that God is done with the Jew don't know what they're talking about. His will determined the purpose of salvation. His wisdom planned this job of salvation. His work wrought this salvation. And his word declared it to be finished. He is admittingly. He is adequately. He is adorably the author of salvation. Nobody be like him. Nobody be like him. This kind God, oh, you've never seen <clears throat> his typo. He's called in scripture the ancient of days. The word ancient means in long past, in time long past. Dating, the, the word ancient means in time long past. The word ancient means dating from a remote period. Uh, the word ancient means very old. The word ancient means the aged or aged. Uh -huh. Old in wisdom and experience. The word ancient means predating the Roman Empire. Notice that he is not ancient of years, which would imply age, but ancient of days. And that term ancient of days indicates agelessness. Ancient of days indicates timelessness. Ancient of days indicates changeless character. No age lines follow his brow. He has no defects, no old age pain, no loss of muscle tone. The Lord is ripped. There is no weakness. He is unwrinkled by the years. And his body and vigorous vitality and virtuous energy are unwearied by ceaseless activity. Even though his activity is ceaseless, and vigorous his body is unwearied the age are unable to age this ageless one the ages are unable to age this ageless one he abides unchanged Hebrews 13 and 8 says he is the same yesterday today and forever no loss of teeth no loss of hearing no loss of sight but forever and eternity and eternally sorry he remains the ageless one. He doesn't forget anything. There are no creaking of the bones. His back doesn't go out before he does. He's the ageless one. Oh, glory, glory, and glory to God. The march of the seasons cannot mar his fairness, nor foul weather destroy his freshness. He has the dew of youth, according to Psalms 110 and verse number 3. The centuries cannot change his comeliness nor cramp his competence, for he is immune from infirmity. Christ is the embodiment of the glorious Godhead, embracing the treasures of truth and the loveliness of light. He is as young as the morning. Oh, rocker sucker. Although he be ancient in origin, he is as young as the morning. He is as youthful as the daybreak. He, the incomparable one who shielded Abraham, was the same one that sustained Elijah and the same one that stayed the plagues in Israel. He was and he is and he is to come. 
His energy knows nothing of exhaustion and his freshness never faces fatigue. The brilliance of his brightness never blurs. The sunlight sheen of his sympathetic face never shadows. And the sufficiency of his saving strength never stalls. His hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Isaiah 59 and verse 1. His exhaustless storehouse was never seen. Oh, glory to God. The psalmist said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He has an exhaustless storehouse. Yes, we see his providential care. We see his paternal interest. We see his patient ear. We see his prevailing goodness. We see his precious promises. We see his protecting hand. And we see his perfect strength. Oh, glory to God. Somebody give me a good hallelujah. Up in here, up in here. In Revelation 1 and 8, he was and is and is to come the almighty God. He is competent. He is independent and self-sufficient in his almightiness. He, the Lord our God is supremely real he is faultlessly just he is infinitely tender children would come to him and sit on his knee he is graciously kind neither do i condemn thee he is graciously kind jesus wept he is almighty in the material realm he is almighty in the physical realm he is almighty in the spiritual realm He's almighty in the judicial realm as he was referred to in scripture as the great judge of the earth. He displays the sublimity of thought. He displays the stability of mind. He displays the sovereignty of will. He displays the sufficiency of wisdom. He displays the security of power. He displays the suitability of grace. And he also displays the serenity of peace being himself the prince of peace. Ah, rock a shocker, rock a shocker. When we pause to ponder his enormous energy, when we pause to ponder his stupendous strength, when we pause to ponder his marvelous might, when we pause to ponder his gracious gift, when we pause to ponder his generous pity, when we pause to ponder his gorgeous gifts, when we pause to ponder his glorious love, we have to conclude that there is no one quite like him. Unto him be glory in the church. He's the eternal God of refuge, eternal in his might and in his power. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. The hymn says, Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Oh, glory to his name. Unto him be wisdom and honor and glory and blessing and power and might and dominion. How long? Forever and forever. Ah, uh, feel my stand up, just stood up. Glory to his precious name. All things emanate from his creative wisdom. According to Psalm 24 and 8, the Bible says of the Lord, he is mighty in battle uh-huh have you got a fight to fight the lord is mighty in battle when you have insurmountable odds against you you've got to remember the lord is mighty in battle he's in battle he's not standing as a spectator observing the proceedings from his lofty seat no no he is mighty in the battle when he's in the battle the battle is already won he told Gideon when Gideon had his uh, tens of thousands of men, he said, Gideon, the men that you have with you, they are too many for me. I need room to maneuver my almightiness. And when he whittled down Gideon's army to 300, he said, by the 300, will I say, I meaning I'm taking responsibility for this battle. I want us all to know that in spite of COVID and all that they're doing and all that they're saying, when the sons of men have come and have uh, assembled themselves and said, we will cast their band asunder, let us all be reminded that the Lord God that we serve is mighty in battle. I thought I'd shout that one. Oh, glory to his name. All things emanate from his creative wisdom. He is mighty in battle. Oh, yes. He, the Lord, reflected the light of life. 
He, the Lord, resembled the glory of God. He, the Lord, radiated the title of truth. He, the Lord, released the gifts of grace. He, the Lord, revealed the love of God. And as if that was not enough, he realized the, the peace of purity and he received the honor of heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Let us therefore stand undismayed and undisturbed. Wherefore, until we know that his omnipotence is overthrown, let us worship him because omnipotence will never be overthrown. Until we hear that his almightiness is abolished, let us reverence him. Until we see that his immutability is imperiled, let us keep on believing him. Until we find that his unchangeableness is undermined, let us trust him. Until we read that his covenant is canceled, let us bless him. Oh yes, yes. If we think that his superiority is superseded, let us extol him. Until we sense that his faithfulness is failing, let us follow him. Until we discern that his dominion is declining, let us serve him. Until we feel that his kingdom is crumbling, let us obey him. Until we prove that his purpose is paralyzed, let us honor him. Until we detect that his throne has been usurped, let us glorify him. Until his pledge is fulfilled in the kingdom of God, let us honor him. All hail the power of Jesus' name. If it were possible for us to weigh the worth of Christ's worthiness, if it were possible for us to measure the magnitude of his meekness, if it were possible for us to recount the resources of his righteousness, to perceive the perfection of his preciousness, to grasp the glories of his goodness, to ascertain the authority of his almightiness, to determine the depths of his devotedness. Oh, feel the anointing here. The ultimate calculation will defy human expression, for all his attributes are timeless, changeless, and ageless in their character. In 1 Peter 5, 10 and 11, it says, But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, and we don't like this part, but Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Uh, this day and age, the Christians of this day dislike to have anything to do with suffering. But he said, after you have suffered a little while, it will make you perfect. That word there means mature. It will establish, establish, stabilize you. It will strengthen and settle you. It says to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Some shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Oh, glory to God. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? There is none like unto him. That's why I refer to him as the incomparable one, as the incomparable Christ. Nobody be like him. Nobody be like him. Who is like the Lord? As I circle this airport and in a minute or two, I will bring this plane to a perfect landing. Are you feeling a brother now? Glory to God. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Ah, to his omniscience, there is no orbit. To his excellence, there is no end. To his sovereignty, there is no shoreline. To his lordship, there is no limitation. To his dominion, there is no demarcation. To his compassion, there is no circumference. To his blessings, there is no border. The man said in the song that blessed my soul, I search all over, I couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still I couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, 
Nobody greater, Lord. Nobody greater than you. Yes, yes. There is none like unto him. He is peerless. There is none like unto him. Beside him, there is no other. Beside him, there is no other. Beside him, there is no other. He sits alone, his imperial majesty, on the great white throne that's soon to come. Oh, bless the Lord, man. He sits alone, the supreme one, the last one standing, God of gods, king of glory, Lord of hosts, the nail in the sure place, the resurrection and the life in the cemetery. All hail the power of his name. All hail the power of his kingdom. All hail the power of his might. All hail the power of his dominion. Oh, glory, there is none that can be likened unto the income, parable one. Nobody be like him. No infernal power can usurp his throne. No uh, politician can paralyze his purpose. No power can cause his kingdom to crumble. No one can cause his dominion to decline. No principality can make his faithfulness fail. None can cancel his covenant. No one can undermine his unchangeableness. None can imperil his immutability. No prophet can abolish his almightiness. None can overthrow his omnipotence. All glory, all honor, all might, all power, all dominion be unto the Lord our God. And to that I say in conclusion, let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. May he come riding on that white horse. Oh yes, may he come with his vesture dipped in blood and out of his mouth goes a two-edged sword and he shall rule the nations with a rod of iron. He's not coming back as gentle Jesus, meek and mild, but he's coming back as king of glory, Lord of hosts, with the armies of God riding with him. He's riding in majesty. He's crowned with many crowns as the angels join and cast their crowns before his throne and bow and give honor and respect and majesty and glory and dominion unto the Lord our God, to the one who is the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all, king of kings, king of life, king of glory, healer of diseases, pain taker, chain breaker, his imperial majesty, the all conquering lion of Judah. Somebody shout hallelujah. The boom is out.